I am joined by John Carmichael, whose photograph from an airplane of the 2017 eclipse uh, not only has gone viral, but it is just an incredible, incredibly beautiful shot. So, John, uh, thank you for joining me now. I just have to hear this story. How did this come about in 2017 that you're on an airplane and you take this incredible picture? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. It was uh, 20 years in the making, believe it or not. When I was 12 years old, I learned what an eclipse was. My geography teacher taught me what an eclipse was, you know, and did a whole demonstration, showed us all these photos. And that's what sparked uh, my love for astronomy. And then later on in life, I became a photographer and I became a sport pilot. And so with all these passions merged together for astronomy and photography and flying, I had this idea many, many years ahead of time, you know, if I could get up high enough in the air, could you actually see the shape of the moon shadow moving across the earth? That's what this dark area is here. That's the shape of the moon shadow moving across the earth at 2000 miles per hour. So selfishly, that's, that's what I just, I wanted to witness that. I wanted to see that. And as a photographer, I wondered, can I actually capture this, this historic, you know, the first eclipse in 99 years in the U S this historic fleeting, beautiful moment. And so I, uh, <laughs> was really determined when I had this idea. And so I, I looked at all the commercial flights around the U.S. and tried to match the moon shadow path with all these commercial flights. And I was just pulling my hair out thinking, there's no way this is going to work out because, you know, the moon shadow is flying so fast and these commercial flights are 500 miles per hour. So to try to intersect that perfectly is nearly impossible but then i saw one flight on southwest airlines going from portland oregon to st louis missouri and the flight path itself matched the moon shadow path almost perfectly so there wasn't as much of an intersection to worry about and i thought I got to do it. And there was one seat left and I live in New York. Well, although I'm in my camper van right now, but, <laughs> uh, and so I live nowhere near the moon shadow path. So I had to book another flight to get to Oregon the day before the eclipse. And it was just a normal commercial flight and Southwest didn't have any assigned seating. And I got group C seat 18. And I'm like, I'm going to be the last one on this plane. I really need a window seat, you know, up front so that the wing isn't in the way of the shot. You know, all these factors are against me. So I brought $600 cash with me to bribe some <laughs> Somebody for their window seats. Oh my and, gosh. And uh, I just got extremely lucky with the kindest, uh, you know. Uh, flight crew. Uh, I introduced myself before the flight and I had all my camera gear around my shoulders, you know, to show maybe I'm legit, maybe I know what I'm doing. And, and I showed, you know, uh, them some of my photography work and they said, you flew across the country to be on this flight to take photos of this. I said, yeah, but I really need a window seat and I'm group C. And they said, come <laughs> with us. And I got on the plane even before boarding, they introduced me to the, both pilots and the flight crew. And they said, this guy's had this dream since he was 12 years old. We need to help him out. And so then I started collaborating with the captain and he actually washed my window for me from the outside of the plane. And they said, pick whatever seat I wanted. And then I, I told him, you know, I, I wanted to get this panoramic view of the earth. I needed to get at least a 180 degree view of the earth. But in order to do that, shooting through this little eight inch wide window, I need to do what's called a photographic mosaic. So is there any way you could sort of turn the plane around when we're in the moon shadow? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's like, that's that was his response too. And he's like, I would have to get approval by the FAA to do that. And I said, I, I know, I know, but I know it's absurd to even ask this. He's like, it is. I mean, don't get your hopes up, but considering it's such a historic day and everybody's so excited i will ask them but you know it's a slim chance so and then we climb up to thirty-five thousand feet and he announces uh ladies and gentlemen we're, i'm gonna do an s turn maneuver and i'm like oh my god he's gonna do it and i'm getting all these shots done and then he actually call the flight attendants get a call from the captain they asked me john the captain wants to know how is that turn i'm like are you kidding me this is actually <laughs> my own private jet now that I always wanted. And so I said, well, since you're asking, it wasn't good enough. And he, he turned the plane around five times oh, and wow. thank God, you know, and I, I, you know, got all the data in and everything. And I took, it took over a year, not over a year, just under a year to get all, all of the images stitched together. I took over a thousand photos in that moment. And, uh, and it was, you know, hundreds of hours of work. And I, and so I released it on the one year anniversary in 20, wow. uh, 2018. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what's really incredible uh, about this photo is just, I mean, first of all, it's, it's spectacular. I had no idea it took that much work, but also I'm just thinking nobody else, no other professional photographer 
in the country, in the world, had your idea. This was an, an incredible idea, and you made it happen. Thanks. I really appreciate that. I didn't, I guess I, I didn't realize that at the time. To me, it was just this vision I had for so long, and it was this sort of this childhood dream, really, and this vision evolved over time. It's really wild. You never know what can happen, you know, if you stick to your your core dreams, and you know, if you have a vision or something, no matter how silly or uh, unlikely it is to happen, you know, pursue it and don't be afraid to ask ridiculous questions and <laughs> you know and that's really what i want to ask you to tell me about the reaction because when i first saw this photo i was like oh my gosh how in the world did he even do this but as you mentioned there's a almost an emotional reaction for those of us who saw the 2017 eclipse and really relate to just being able to see the corona and a completely different view from what we saw on the ground you know experiencing totality is unlike anything you've ever seen in your life it's it's really undescribable and no photograph no matter what kind of photograph can do it justice at all and you really have to experience it for yourself and so i highly recommend people travel to totality and you know um being up in the air like this is is special in its own way uh to have that um zoomed out sort of perspective um and but being on the ground is really special because the temperature drops you know 18 20 degrees there's a 360 degree uh um sunset around you you know the moon shadow is just bam right above you and you can actually take your glasses off and look at the sun with your naked eye and see these solar flares and prominences shooting out and see you know the uh, it's just it's like looking at the eye of god i mean it's 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 the most beautiful thing you'll ever see in your life and, and that's an objective statement that's not even subjective that's a fact <laughs> i totally uh, agree with you on that I, it just uh, it really is incredible have you talked to an astronomer at all about you you mentioned it a little bit about how difficult it is first of all uh, to get that photo and to get the, the right angles but you would think in an airplane you would have more time with totality but as you mentioned the, the moon's going more than 2,000 miles per hour, and the, the airplane is just trying to catch up with that. Yeah, we did have a uh, three-minute totality, which was about 37 seconds longer than everybody else on the ground. We could have had even longer, but the, the pilot you know, was doing all these turns. But we were going with the moon's shadow while we were doing all these crazy turns. Um, and so we actually, and thank God we had just that last few seconds longer because the last turn is when I finally got my shot of the eclipse itself, which was obviously a very important puzzle piece in the, the whole the whole thing. Um, and I happened to get the diamond ring moment, which is that last sliver of sunlight shining through the canyon walls of the moon's surface. It's a split second moment, and I happened to get it on the last turn, and, and then the eclipse was over. It really was just this incredible meant to be moment and i you know the whole year i was working on it i just thought this is this is important to finish because it just felt so much bigger than me and and i just you know first eclipse in 99 years here in the u.s and it was such a uniting moment in our country you know everybody just took a pause and just looked up at the heavens and and celebrated together and all the news was just this wonderful story, uniting story. And when's the last time that's happened in our country? I'm, I'm excited to see your next uh, uh, picture. And of course, uh, we'll be experiencing this together on April 8th. Um, I'll be out in Fredericksburg, Texas. So excited to see uh, oh. your photo. And again, thank you so much for your time and just sharing your expertise, your story. Uh, I really appreciate it, John.